So Allah, before I start uh, the uh, actual lecture, I want to tell you, inshallah, what are we covering and what is the format. Uh, this lecture will be divided to uh, three uh, topics. Three topics. So about 45 minutes. So about 15 minutes roughly each, inshallah. And then 15 minutes for Q&A. Uh, first 15 minutes, I'm going to be talking about uh, our perception of Qur'an. What is Qur'an? What we, how we understand it, how we are made to understand it, how, uh, how it is presented to us, and how it should be presented according to the Quran itself and according to the Sunnah of Rasulullah Sallallahu and according to tradition. Also, keeping in mind, in mind some of the modern educational theories of learning and all of that. So that's, inshallah, just a little bit in 15 minutes. Of course, the time is short, uh, but we'll try to cover as much as I can. So. The next uh, 15 minutes would be about uh, memorizing the Qur'an. Like if you wanted to memorize the Qur'an, what is the importance of that? Why we memorize the Qur'an? Uh, why? Right? And how should I do it if I want? And you know, creating your own routine and bonding with the Qur'an. So the first 15 minutes will actually be very, very important that they will lead to the next 15 minutes. So if you're not getting the first 15 minutes is going to be very hard for you to relate in the next 15 minutes. The last 15 minutes would be about the subject of the parables of the Qur'an or al-amthal of al in, in al-Qur'an and how they are presented and its importance as a style and all of that. Is that clear, inshallah? Sure. Then you have questions and please write your questions along um, uh, and then you know, have a chance to ask them. If I don't answer all your questions, Inshallah, you can submit them, and I'll answer them online, and I'll keep doing that every week, Inshallah. Uh, also, I wanted to let you know that uh, today I started a Facebook page about Quran and its science only. It is going to become a public page, Inshallah, in a couple of days, and participating in it, a few of my students uh, from all over, Alhamdulillah, the world, and uh, other uh, brothers and sisters who are either scholars of Tajweed or they are students, advanced students of Tajweed. And they, uh, the purpose of it is to serve the English-speaking audience all over the place, right? So it's, it's what is Tajweed, how to pronounce the Quran, how to go on your own pace, and there would be lots of nice information about the Quran, also for the advanced level. So this is going to do, inshallah, and I'll give you information about that. With that said, uh, inshallah, bismillah, we start our uh, lecture. First, I want to warn you with <laughs> a couple of things. Um, one of uh, the brothers who attend my speeches, my Jum'ah khutbah, um, and his, him and his wife, they are both my students. They are like uh, in their 50s. So. <laughs> so that brother is an engineer, very smart person, alhamdulillah, mashallah. He is a, a Muslim revert for the past uh, 25 years or so. And his wife is born and raised Muslim. And that, that background is very important to what I'm going to say. So uh, he listens to my speech at least once a month. So his wife is my student. So the wife, mashallah, more advanced than him. She has been my student in the advanced tafsir class for about five years. Um, so she said that my husband, uh, from listening to your speeches, he said, there are too many rabbits to catch. <laughs> too many rabbits to catch. That's how he uh, uh, summarized his experience listening to Qutbat al Jum'ah. And that was very important feedback for me, by the way. Being, you know, someone who knows adult education, I know exactly what he means. As I said, he's very smart. To reach to that result, that means he went through too many things. Right? Until he can visualize and bring an image to it. So I want you to take that note, putting the things that you experience in an image format will help a lot. Putting any experience that you go through in an image format, it makes it easy for you, and that's actually the next 15 minutes, the last 15 minutes we'll be talking about that, and that's what Al-Amthal Al-Quran means, right? So putting things in image format so you can relate to. So he said there are too many rabbits. I told her, what do you mean? She said, the sheikh, when he's giving the khutbah, it's like he keeps throwing rabbits at us, and I cannot catch them. That means there are too many ideas and too many uh, you know, pieces of information in every direction, right? So I could take this as a compliment, and I, took the, I can take this as constructive criticism. Don't you agree? <coughs> yeah, I can take it as a compliment. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm 
sending too many rabbits, you know, for people, you know, to catch and all of that and, you know, have fun. Or I can take it constructive criticism, I need to be more focused, right? And to see the audience in front of me, and if it's too many rabbits, I can give each one a cage <laughs> with a rabbit in it, right? Or, you know, the, you know, give them at least how to, to handle this or enable them with the filter or some type of, you know, glasses that this is for me, this is for me, but this is not for me, and so on, right? So this is uh, warning number one. <coughs> That's what you're going to experience when I'm giving the lecture. So I want you to have that. Another uh, person in another state, I was just giving a uh, lecture about knowledge and its importance and the use and all of that. Uh, uh, and then, you know, that person came to me and he said, you know, after listening to all day of your uh, workshop and all of this, and this specific lecture, I can see that your, the information you give is like a slow release capsule. You know, slow release, like, you know, there are some pills or some vitamins that, you know, once you take it, the rush goes in your body, and the other one that is a slow release. And that was also a very important feedback for me, right? Each one has its own benefit. So when you are dealing uh, with anything, sometimes you need that rush. When I was in Hajj, some people were about to faint. So you need to give them some solution or something like that that needs to act at once, right? But some people, they are fine. But their body on the long run needs some vitamins, so they need that slow release. So that was also a very, very important feedback for me as well. Why I started with those two warnings? Because are those, those are the two main foundations when dealing with the Qur'an. When dealing with the Qur'an in a modern way or a nice way, given the material life around us, and given our busy schedules, okay? So, one way is you will be overwhelmed by the amount of information that people tell you this is Tajweed and this is that course and that is that course and this is this sheikh and that's that sheikh and this is the fashion and this is the latest and this is Madani, this is Makki, you know. You get overwhelmed like those rabbits everywhere and then you say what? You know what? This is not my game. You know, this Quran, is, you know, no. I will just do what I'm doing and that's it. Or someone is up to the challenge, okay? So you know what? I'm going to be focused and I'll catch a rabbit today and another one tomorrow and the third one after tomorrow, and I'm good, until I become the rabbit catcher one day, <laughs> right? Like, I know exactly how to get. And over time, I'm going to develop the sense and the experience to know which one fits and which one not. So I'll have that. And then I'll even go above to this limit that I help this sheikh who is throwing all of that, and I become the one who distinguish. This group goes to this category, and this group goes to this category. So you create your own goal. So you are not the end. I don't want you to feel that you are, not, you are the end receiver of my lecture today. That's not what Rasulullah taught us. That's not what Rasulullah taught us. Rasulullah did not say, may Allah have mercy, or may Allah brighten the face of somebody who learned from me what I did and acted according to it. He didn't say that. He said, may Allah have mercy and may Allah brighten the face of somebody who heard what I say, who understood it, then he delivered it to someone else. Because maybe the one you deliver it to will practice it from a different angle and will do better than you, so you win both ways. Right? Also, I want you to understand that Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam when he told us the best among us are the ones who do what? The ones who do what in relation to Qur'an? Teach the Qur'an and learn it. Khayrukum man? Ta'allama. The one who, best of you, khayrukum man? The one who ta'allama al-Qur'an. Ta'allama al-Qur'an wa allamahu. And he does two. He did not say khayrukum man ta'allama al-Qur'an aw allamahu or خيركم الذين تعلمون القرآن والذين يعلمون مثلا يعني the Arabic grammar can serve that purpose of saying the best among you are two categories the ones who are learning and the ones who are teaching but he actually make them one category they are learning and teaching so I am learning also today while I'm teaching you how, how do I learn while I'm teaching you anybody can tell me I'm not speaking now you're silent how am I learning from you the feedback that we 
the feedback. What else? Your reaction and your interaction teaches me how to tell you next time, right? Your questions that will come will tell you what kind of people, right? You are you. So that's that's how it is a mutual process. Also, the best of education, the one which is student-centered, not the one according to the teacher. One of the reasons why I failed in business miserably. <laughs> I tried, by the way, I tried, <laughs> and I failed in business miserably, even the business of selling books, Islamic books. <laughs> so one time it came in my head when I was in Minnesota, you know, let me do some business on the side, and the best business is the business to sell the books, right? Then, you know, I bought about five, six, five, yeah, between five and six thousand dollars of books, and I ended up for four months reading those books. <laughs> <laughs> so where, why did I fail miserably, even though I had the money, and, and I bought the books, and I had the place, and I had the customer base in the masjid, and everything was good. So why did I fail in business, you think? You didn't market it. You didn't, didn't, didn't market it. No, I marketed it. You did it for your... I told the people to come, and the people nobody come, and the people come, and they go around and around, and they check the books nobody and all that, but nobody buys anything. Nah. Business, <laughs> business, is yeah. They're interesting. No, business is not for me, that's the result, by the way. That's, <laughs> that's what I understand now, alhamdulillah. But anybody else? They didn't think they had a problem. There was a problem. They're not so much of huge. You are very close. What? You 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 bought the books that you like, not what. Thank you. That's that's the reason, right? That is the exact reason. I called the man. All of them know me. They give me even credit for six months. They said, you know, don't worry. Pay us whenever, right? <laughs> then you know, I'm not. You know, they said it, but. At least I give some money, right? But nothing is given to them, right? So they said, what's going on? Whenever I ordered the books, they said, Sheikh, are you sure? You want that encyclopedia of the Mufassirin of the Qur'an? <laughs> you know, uh, six volumes. And you want the comparative fiqh, like two volumes. And you want, the, who's going to buy that? I said, oh, it's good, it's good. I like that, that book, is great. But then I realized later on that I am buying for so. So if I teach your class, or you find the teacher teaching your class without engaging you and customizing it for you and seeing your needs and making you love that subject, that teacher is only thinking about you as him or her. They see how they process things and they expect that from you. And that's where the, uh, the break comes or where the gap comes. All right? So this is uh, an important thing. Also, uh, the frame of mind frame of mind. Sometimes I can give you a different frame of mind that you don't need. You don't need at all. But I make you think this is what you need to behave. Right? Apple is the greatest uh, example for that. Oh, the Apple phone. <laughs> <laughs> right? They succeeded, or Steve Jobs, they succeeded to make us want this. That's the whole point. It become in your psyche that whenever a new one comes, I want it in my hand. I don't know why, but that's what it is. It's just a phone at the end of the day that has many things, right? But it's like, a, if I don't have this, means I'm not like uh, who I expect to be. So that's changing your frame of mind. Another one, uh, sometimes making people, and, and I'm going to apply it to the Quran teachers in a minute. So some people, they make a big deal out of something very little, or make little of something really serious. Sometimes this can be good or bad, by the way, right? Example from the commercial world in the TV. How many of you saw a commercial about saving or insurance or something like that? And you know, very little, tiny, tiny money that makes big at the end, right? Some people, they don't pay attention to that, so they wanted to show them how a small thing can result in a big thing. And he brought the dominoes, you know, the little one goes and after that a bigger one and a bigger one and a bigger one to the point that he said if we repeat this process six more times like an empire state building size can fall down <coughs> because of that little tiny thing right and I'm gonna apply that to the Quran in a minute right and then the other one that teaches you that you want something which is not there you don't need it actually you don't need it but they make you feel that you need it like I just told you Anybody familiar with the latest uh, uh, Charmin toilet paper commercial? No? I am the Sheikh and I know this guy. Come on, sisters, brothers. 
You know, there is a com list commercial that came out that they're comparing this toilet paper, and I'm sorry, I'm using toilet paper here, but <laughs> toilet paper to a regular one. And what, what they're doing, a bunch of coins, they bring a bunch of coins, right? And they put it in that toilet paper, and the same bunch of coins here. <coughs> so that one breaks, and that one holds. Right? Mm -hmm. What are you getting out of that commercial? A mechanical property. What do you get out of that commercial here? <laughs> For that toilet paper, that it's different. <laughs> like, I'm buying toilet paper now, and I don't know, I know why I'm buying toilet paper before. We all know why we buy toilet paper, right? But what is that commercial has to do with what we do with toilet paper? In case your wallet gets lost and you need to carry money, you need to improvise. Yeah, that, that, yeah, that, maybe. Showing my example, convincing them. No, Showing evidence. No, actually making you... Uh, making your standards for buying something out of the ordinary, mm. right? I walk into a store and I tell him, give me your most expensive, best, the all the abilities kind of laptop. Why I'm asking for that? Because I have a frame of mind and the standard that I don't want to be missing anything, even I don't need it. I don't need it. I'll pay $3,000, but I don't want anybody to come in and say, there is a computer that has that function. That function appeals to me or not, I don't care. I just want to have it. You see the frame of mind? And that applies to Quran as well, and that is actually a reason many people don't memorize. They don't. Because they don't know why, they don't know how, they don't know when, they don't know who, right? It's just an overwhelming subject. Quran is like a huge thing for you, right? Don't even come close because it's only for us, sheikhs, right? <laughs> you have to be like that, and so on. So I don't need you to tell me the coins break this and that. I don't need that, okay? But they make you feel like this. Now applying this to the Quran, we, unfortunately, all the past century or so, the Quran was presented to us as a huge task. It is associated with some corporal or physical punishment, if you don't do. It is presented also in the modern time that you have to take off from everything if you want to memorize, right? Like a child has to take off one or two years to go to a madrasa to memorize. Yeah. And in the process, <coughs> the parents has to sacrifice the SAT exam, has to sacrifice application to a Ivy League co college and all of that, right? While the frame of mind, if we switch it a little bit, you know, somebody who is going to be dedicated or the life to be dedicated to the Quran supposed to be the best candidate for all the above. Not the other way around. It's not the other way around. If I take my child off from school to do Quran, that means I'm giving him or her the message that this Quran is not relative to your life. Even though they achieve, even though they become a hafiz, they will struggle coming back to school. Then we discover later on, oh, those who memorized the Quran, they were very smart in the school and they did catch up like this. Actually, you are deceiving yourself. That doesn't work like that. All their life, they feel that to be good and closer to the word of Allah, I have to abandon all this knowledge for two years. Otherwise, I couldn't have done it. And everybody else, see, learn from that example. What do they learn from that example? I cannot memorize the Quran except this way. And that one he said, it was the only way to memorize the Quran, and we're missing up a whole generation. I'm sorry, with no, no offense to any madrasa or anything, but they're doing a great job, may Allah reward them. But from my educational background, that's what I'm seeing. That's what I'm seeing. The real challenge is in the community. You, I want one of you. Enough for me, one life. One or two of you, brothers and sisters, three years from today, ending up memorizing the Quran. So. That becomes like a pioneer. This becomes a precedent. And there is someone, by the way. You know, Brother Muhammad Chalan, many of you know him here. He started like about two years, two and a half years ago. And he has six Jews to go to finish memorizing the Quran. And he is the busiest person ever, right? Now he's doing his master's degree and he's working full time and he is, you know, getting married and all, all of that. And he was managing classes and he was doing all of this. And <coughs> with the little guidance, when I sat with him, I changed Alhamdulillah's frame of mind of being scared and, you know, hesitant. And he's going through and the first five Jews, it was hard and then it continued. It became a routine for him. I have to do this every single day. Otherwise, my day is no good. That's his frame of mind now. If I don't memorize in one given day, even one verse, this day is no good for me. 
is he to switch the frame of mind not to fit the Quran in your day, no, fit the day for your memorization. Right? That is the frame of mind I wanted to talk about. طيب. Now we are moving to the memorization aspect, right? The memorization aspect. So first, the outcome of the first uh, point of today's lecture is how to live and love the Qur'an. Love the Qur'an and live the Qur'an. Qur'an is not a duty, it's not a task on you that you have to memorize. Memorization is a choice. I want you to repeat this after me. Memorization is a choice. Memorization, Memorization is a choice. choice. Believe that. Memorization is a choice. It is not an obligation on you. It's a choice for who? From you. And it's a choice by Allah Azza wa Jal. To bless you with it. Not everybody who wants to memorize end up memorizing. And not those who thought that they would never memorize, stayed up, they ended up memorizing. I never thought that I'd become a sheikh, but guess what? <laughs> and that's what I became at the end. I stayed resisting this idea of being on the same track my father wanted me to be. Hmm? Just because of that re uh, reason, I don't want to be. And I kept resisting this until I graduated from college. Actually, me studying English literature in college was a statement that I don't want to become a sheikh. But guess what? It turned out to become the best asset to help me as a sheikh. <laughs> but you see the point I'm trying to make here. So sometimes what you think is deterring you from memorization is actually the reason that you're supposed to be memorizing. It becomes your biggest asset. Being busy. Quran for busy people, you know? You know, being busy is a proof of what? Just is a proof of what, brothers? Achievement. Achievement. That you are a person who is goal-oriented and who has more tasks than normal people. Right? And busy. So why Quran is not one of them? If you could accommodate all of this and you are a high achiever, you are a type A personality, and you are successful in your college and looking for a promotion and pl planning for retirement. And if you are married, you, you have plans for traveling. You have Everything is figured out. How about the most important text that came to this world through the most important person, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, carried by the Sahaba through you. If I talk to you about how Quran is taught from Rasulullah until now, you would be crying tonight. How? People sacrifice their life and their effort and their money just to, to be a carrier of Qur'an. <coughs> you know? Some of us say, Qur'an is the memorization of Qur'an, Sheikh. What is the point? It's not fard, is it? I said, actually, you're asking the wrong question. Again, the frame of mind, huh? Ask the wrong question. Are you doing only things that is fard on you? <laughs> no. is, is, is everything you do in this life only obligation? The answer is no. Nobody can actually I challenge anybody to say yes. That every single thing you do, every act you do in this life, is only because it is obligation. <coughs> actually, you're doing things that is forbidden as well. And you enjoy them. Okay? Unfortunately, may Allah forgive us all. Amen. Right? So if things that you do, not obligation. What makes you do things which, is, which are not obligations? Which are not obligations? What makes you do that? Ask yourself that question and make a list. Would you do that, please? Find the interesting things that you like. A book that you like to read. What attracted me to do it? How I found the schedule to do it? How I changed all my life to finish that book that can be finished in two weeks in one night? How did this happen? You know how did this happen? <clears throat> the same way I can tell you now, somebody memorized the whole Quran in four months. Yes. Someone memorized the Quran after they were 70 years old in one year. Wow. Yes. Was the first language Arabic? No. <laughs> Not necessarily. No. Actually, the one who memorized the Quran after 70 years is illiterate even. Does not read and write Arabic. <coughs> they were Arab and did not read or write Arabic. It's by? Listening. By listening and repeating and over and over. When there is a well, there is? A way. Say it again. A when there is? A way. There is? A way. That's it. If it applies to other things, why does it not apply to the book of Allah? Azzajal? Yeah. You need the dua. You need the will. You need the professional help. And you need to be dedicated. I tell people, 
You want to know the secret of memorizing the Quran? Yes or no? Yes. Yes, yes. for sure. Just make a schedule and force yourself that you have to follow it no matter what. That's the whole secret. Yes. Regardless. Why people fail miserably in going to the gym and exercising? <laughs> yeah, the schedule. There's got to be a routine. I have to do it. Anybody knows me when I was fat? <laughs> Anybody remember? As opposed to right now. As opposed to right now. <laughs> yeah. I was an athlete when I was young. I, I used to play sports and all of that. But then when I came to the United States, boom, <laughs> everything flipped. Being a sheikh, you know, all this and all that. Like, again, my frame of mind was very bad, was, was twisted. And even though doing the right thing, doing the right thing without a plan can have the tremendous <coughs> effects on you. And Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, I'm going to relate it back and forth, modern, old, modern, old, right? Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when Abdullah ibn Amr come to him and he says, I fast every day, right? And I stay uh, every night and I do this and I do that. He told him, take it easy, man. No, right? And he kept going with him gradually. Now, here is, a, here is a subtle issue. If someone comes to you and he says, I finish the Quran every night, right? What are you going to tell him? Finish it every couple of days, man, better. But Rasulullah told him, finish it every month. You see? So he take him from this to that. <coughs> you getting it or not? He did not take him one degree less. He called him the minimum. And then he kept going with him up. Right? Sometimes, you know, you are going full power. So when you give advice, you say, <coughs> no. Take a step back. Plan it from the beginning. Now when Rasulullah told him, finish the Quran every 30 days, what did Rasulullah have in mind? He told him actually in the hadith. He told him because you're going to get old. Mm -hmm. Right? You're going to get old. You need the routine to be part of your life based on that old age, not based on what you can do now. But you get the idea, right? Mm -hmm. So when you make a plan for memorizing the Quran, make a plan for memorizing the whole thing. And I am dedicating five years of my life to finish Quran, which will stay with me until the end of my life. Okay? Students come to me and their parents, Sheikh, we have a time. We, you know, we need to finish, you know, the Qaeda. Qaeda is not a Qaeda, you know. <laughs> we need to finish the, you know, the Qaeda. Alhamdulillah, there is no book called ISIS. Alhamdulillah. You know, so we need to finish the Qaeda. Qaeda means foundation, right? The book in like three months. And we need to finish the Quran Nazra in like one year. So we can do the party. <laughs> actually, 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 I commend these parents. For one thing, they had a plan, but the wrong one, right? <clears throat> but they had what? A plan. a plan. So I don't belittle it. I don't belittle it. I said, that's a very good plan. But you know what? I will take the whole year in teaching them the card. What? Yeah, like that, right? I said, just listen, listen to me. Imagine after one year, when your child, after finishing one year and learning how to pronounce correctly, reading the ayat fluently, how much they would spend when they're reading the Qur'an with that quality half of the time mm -hmm. that you were planning, right? But that one year is going to stay with them for the rest of their life every time they recite the Qur'an, they recite it what? Right. Beautifully. Right. Now if I finish fast, if one letter, one letter only is not pronounced right, that becomes like a deformity in their recitation for the rest of their life as well. So what's your choice? He said, Sheikh, your plan. <laughs> it's your plan, right? That's called sales, sales technique, right? <laughs> yeah, so you, how you convince people with what they do, but build on it. Don't laugh at, about, don't, don't belittle people's ideas, right? Just change them. That's what the Prophet Wasallam used to do. The Prophet used to build on people's aptitude, right? you know? I, I want to do this, but you can do it that way. What if you add that? You know, come with me. Ride with him, sallallahu alaihi wasallam. He teaches, you know, like that. So this is the way. Also, memorizing the Quran should not be a daunting task. Don't be scared of it. Try saying that I want to do the last ten surahs of the Quran. <coughs> right? That's my first goal. 
Then after you finish, then say, I will finish the 30 Jews of the Quran. Then I want to perfect my recitation in that 30 Jews of the Quran. Then, you know, I will choose a surah that it is dear to me, like Surah Al-Mulk, maybe Surah Al-Kahf. That, that's how you gain your confidence. In the meantime, you achieved, by the way, hundreds of skills. And I'm not exaggerating. I'm saying hundreds of skills. The skill of holding the Mus'haf, right? The skill of respecting the Quran. The skill of your ear becoming trained to listen to the right thing, right? The skill of having a relationship with the teacher. The skill of how to memorize. You develop your own, right? You develop your own. You know, when I listen to it first, I memorize it faster. When I read the tafsir of it first, or the translation, I memorize it faster. So you develop your own. It's not me. I don't have like a wahi. This is the only way to memorize. <laughs> Everyone can memorize their own way. At the end of the day, when you come, you say it right. Okay? So that's how you do it. Alhamdulillah, your way. So memorization should not be what? A task that. Now, I want you to imagine the ability of, from your head, at any time you start your prayer, you can have a variety, for surahs to choose, a variety of surahs to choose from. Is it the same like you're repeating the same exact surahs that you know every time? <laughs> Then Salat al Isha, then Salat al Fajr, for the past 20 years. Come on. Come on. Add one surah per month. Per month. One surah per month. Add three lines. So at the end of the year, you have 12 more surahs. One year, 12 surahs. Right? So five years, 60 surahs. Right? So you memorize the 30 Jews in five years. That's an achievement, by the way. You know what's going to happen? Your child, inshallah, will memorize three Jews. Mm -hmm. Because you do one. And every parent wants their children to become <coughs> better. better than that. And you memorize with them as well. So always find something to catch on. Don't take memorization as something. Who, who is running behind you to judge you if you are a memorizer or not? Tell me. Who is? You are a professional, right? Who is going to judge you if you memorize Quran or not? Who? Nobody. Memorization is a choice. Memorization is what? A choice. You make that choice or you don't make it. It's up to you. Choose. Am I going to be the one who is sitting by myself and I'm saying, A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitanir Rajeem Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim Alhamdulillahi Alladhi Anzala Ala Abidhi Al Kitab Wa Lam Yaj'al Lahu Iwaja And you recite the whole surah till the end on Thursday night or Friday morning. Yeah. Would it, is, is this the same? Like you have to go and find your Quran and read it? No. Tell me, is it? No. no. It would feel great. You know, if I am in the Qibla, in Taraweeh, and I recite from the Mus'haf, Wallahi, it never feels the same when you recite from your head. Ever. Ever. The Ruh, the Sakina, the tranquility, the connection, the fear. You know that fear? You know, that, that fear has a rush that you become addicted to it. <laughs> and I'm serious. You know, there is a fear. There is a fear there mixed with excitement and mixed with happiness and mixed with awe. I'm reciting the words of Allah and the angels are writing for every letter 10, ten hasanat. Right? And your, your mind and it is flowing there and you reach to the level that you forget who's behind you and what you do. And it's just like that. So imagine if you have the whole Quran like this. Amazing, right? So you have like access to the garden, you can choose whatever you want. Now I can give you, okay, here is your bottle of water, and here is your bottle of water. But if I have like the Fiji, and the, <laughs> you know, all the things, and said, choose your favorite. Is it the same? You are going to end up drinking one. But I give you the choice, right? Always we like the choice. We don't like to be restricted. When it comes to Quran, I want you to think like that, inshallah, Rabbil Alameen. Is that clear? Yes. So the first segment of today, we have to change our frame of mind. Quran is the book of Allah, and memorization is a choice. Quran is the book of Allah, memorization is a choice. You don't have to memorize the whole thing. Make a smaller goal at a time. Test yourself, find your attitude, measure yourself, have professional help, and go from there, right? And don't say language is a barrier. Don't say, I am bad. Actually, that's how you start, because you are bad at something. <laughs> <laughs> that's how you start. How you become a master in something, when you are bad at it. 
So if you're bad at everything and you stay away from it, then you're not going to go anywhere. You become crippled, handicapped. And that's not a good thing. If you're handicapped, Allah created like that. Alhamdulillah, I accept, right? But why I make myself like this if I make... MashaAllah, what a sportsman you are. <laughs> that's called the frame of mind. We accept it to be told Quran is not for you. We accept it to be told memorization is not for you. We accept it to teach our kids in a hidden way Quran is a scary thing. <laughs> right? I wanted to mention something for you. You don't know what you know what hidden curriculum is? Anybody heard that before? Hidden curriculum? You have formal direct curriculum, you have indirect curriculum, and you have hidden curriculum. Right? What is the <coughs> direct curriculum? I'm going to teach you Islamic studies, I'm going to teach you the five pillars of Islam. What are those? This direct curriculum. It means there is a book, when you open, lesson number one, lesson number two, all of us know that one. Yes? yes. Five. The indirect curriculum, you have to pray because this is important. That's what the kid's getting, right? What the kid's getting is, Salah is something important. I'm not saying it's important, but that's what they get from the education. But what is the hidden curriculum? If I'm teaching them Salah, and I'm acting in a certain way as a teacher, they get that as well. Right? So hidden curriculum, <coughs> you're teaching the kids about sharing. So they open the book, sharing. There is an ayah, there is a hadith, right? Sharing, Muslims, yani. there is a hadith, sharing. That is the direct curriculum. What is the indirect curriculum? You have to be nice. You have to be nice. So you are sharing because you are a nice person. When you share, you are a nice person. People will like you, but you are not saying that in the curriculum. But what is the hidden curriculum? They look at the picture. This kid or that girl wearing hijab or not? Is this boys and girls or boys only? That's how it should be. So hidden curriculum, when a teenager watching TV, <coughs> they see that's what a teenager lo should look like. So forget about the plan and the plot of the movie, the hidden curriculum. How much hidden curriculum we as Muslim community do? I'm sorry, there's a lot, a lot of negativity, right? I bring my child to the masjid. I give him the direct curriculum and say, this masjid is the house of Allah. This masjid is a good place to worship Allah, right? And he comes and he finds the imam praying and giving a khutbah. But the hidden curriculum is, he's shouting at people and putting everybody down. What is the hidden curriculum? That's not the place I want to be. Yes? He goes to his friends who are doing all kinds of wrong that I taught them, taught him or her, with the direct curriculum that it is absolutely haram. Right? Absolutely haram. That's direct curriculum. In direct curriculum, you are no good if you do it. But the hidden curriculum, these guys are very nice. They are very accommodating. They don't judge me. I am welcomed regardless. And I'm having fun. And nobody was like, so even though it is haram, what should I do now as a child or a teenager? Now you know what is the problem for us as a community? Huh? So this is what it is. I come to the masjid, halal, good, Allah, I know Allah, I know. But I'm, I'm sure you know the rest, yes. right? And for us, the adults, the same way. Quran, great, book of Allah. Memorizers of Quran, Sahaba, Qiraat, Kobra, Sohra, uh, this, that. Oh, I'd like to do that. I'd like to do that, Sheikh, please. Then you go to the masjid and Sheikh said, No, you're no good. <laughs> Recitation, no good. Look at you, you have to wear sharwal kameez before you sit in front of me. <laughs> right? Or sisters, go teach your children something good. Memorize Quran, what? This for Hafaz, you know. You have to take off from everything and come for two years, then you are good. So something nice, something good, something good. I'm not here putting anybody down. I'm just talking from a perspective, professional perspective. Please take it like that, right? So here is something nice you want to do, but the hidden message is that's not for you. And there is lots of bad things you are not supposed to do, and the hidden message is accessible. Bismillah, Habibi, go take, no problem, everybody. That's why you find a teenager having a book I don't know my daughter is here or not, but one day she got like a, that big of a book. I said, MashaAllah, you have homework for a month. In the morning she said, I'm done. <laughs> In the morning, huh? 
I'm done. I said, what? You've done what? You did the whole thing. She didn't sleep. 24 hours continuous, boom, 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 until finish the book. Then that's for me to look, wow. Why we don't do that with Quran? <laughs> Why we don't do that? I'm not saying memorize the whole Quran in one night. But I'm saying it's doable. Isn't it, Muhammad? Doable. Doable. It's doable. Doesn't matter your age. Doesn't matter your gender. Doesn't matter how many children you have. Doesn't matter how busy your job. Wallahi, it is doable, I swear. وَلَقَدْ يَسَّرْنَا الْقُرْآنَ لِلذِّكْرِ we made it easy to be remembered. فَهَلْ مِنْ مُدَّكِرِ That's the question. Where are the people who are going to memorize? That was the question. It's not like only those who can memorize come forward. No, everybody is material. Mm. But now, don't overwhelm yourself, please. Put yourself a small goal. I'll memorize 10 surahs from now until the end of December. Inshallah, Rabbil Alameen. Write them down. Put them on a, like this on the entrance or where you see them in the house. Right? Put them. And then be creative, brothers and sisters. Be creative. Write them down. Copy them from the, from the Mus'haf and make them a bigger, a bigger, in a bigger format. So every time you're coming out, every time you come in, you're reading. Right? Make them in an interesting way. Sometimes I put the map of the world in front of me. Why? Because I want to remember that I'm not only limited to Houston. Right? I'm concerned about this world. Constantly I'm seeing Syria. Constantly I'm seeing Burma. Constantly I'm seeing Palestine. Constantly, right? This is, this is very important. So put that. So we talked about the frame of mind. And I'm sure you got the idea. We talked about memorization. Mm -hmm. It's not a scary thing. It is a very, very interesting thing. I give you a few examples to taste the sweetness of the Quran. And I'll finish with that, inshallah. But our talks will be always like this. Inshallah, every, every time. Inshallah, be ready for it. I want you to come out empowered, right? Come out like with that spirit. Inshallah. I tell people, change your frame of mind. Until 2009, and Muhammad would like that. <laughs> 2009, working as a sheikh was like a job for me. Only a job. Which is nothing wrong with, right? My job, it's like your job. My job is a sheikh to teach people the deen of Allah, right? Nothing wrong with this. But it was wrong for me to think like that. You know why? Because if a day like Sunday, today I started my day at 5 in the morning, and I did not sleep until now, and this is my third lecture today. All right? So I give one, alhamdulillah, after Salat al-Fajr and Masjid Champion, and I give the Riyadh al-Salihin until the Shuruq, until the Ishraq. Then we uh, question and answer, then after that we go breakfast, وَمَا أَدْرَاكَ مَا breakfast. <laughs> breakfast, that means more question than ever. Right? So that's about another hour. Then I go home, change and take shower and stuff. Then I go teach a youth class at my center in Roots and Sprouts from 11 to 1 p.m. And from 1 to 1.30 is Q&A for them and then their parents and all of that. Then I went home, I rested a little bit, then I came here and I'm here now. Now, I was not able to do that before 2009. So what changed? Passion. No. Frame of mind. Yes, frame of mind. I reversed the idea. I want you to think about this. This is your homework for tonight. I reversed the idea. What was the idea? This is my job, right? My job. If I give one lecture, is enough. If I give two, that means I have extra activity. I need to save more. But if I give three, I'm exhausted, right? Mm. Now, what is the frame of mind? This is a message. It is a risala from Allah Azza wa Jal. Mm. As long as I'm alive, I have to be giving what Allah blessed me with. That should not be the source of my exhaustion. Actually, if I'm exhausted, that's what I'm supposed to be doing to get more energy. Mm. Right? So every time I'm tired, I want to give a lecture. Every time I feel lazy, I go to the masjid. Every time I feel down, I open the Quran and read. <laughs> we are tired, and Ya Bilal, let's have fun with the salah. Let's have comfort with the salah. وَجُعِلَتْ قُرَّةُ عَيْنِي فِي الصَّلَاةِ صلى الله عليه He's tired. Tired that means you lie down. Instead, he stands. Allahu Akbar. Fatiha and Rasat Surah Al Baqarah. You see? Frame of mind. You know, it depends. If your soul is up there in the driver's seat, your body follows. I sleep every day no more than five hours. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. You know, five hours only. If I sleep five hours, five minutes, it's not going to happen because I will wake up like this. 
except if I push myself or I'm sick or I'm tired or something like that. Change. And one of the great people, Imam Hassan al-Banna, rahmatullah alayhi, he would sleep only four hours a day and every 24 hours. He said, if your himma is like that, you sleep only because your body needs it. Not because your brain tells you you have to sleep eight hours. And I get the benefit of eight hours sleep in four hours only because it's what I need, right? Now, we, we close with the style of the Qur'an and how you taste it. Uh, a story, I was giving a, in Ramadan this amthal in the Qur'an after Fajr, in Masjid Champion, <coughs> Muhammad Masjid Champion, kul yum after Fajr, was the one parable of, uh, of, 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 of the Qur'an about this hidden curriculum thing, right? So, this is an example of the hidden curriculum. So I was teaching the people what? Quran, parables of Quran, the style of it, and all of that. You know what? Uh, one of the weirdest things happened. A group of youth started attending, a couple of days. The third day, I find them after Fajr, holding the musahif and asking one senior brother to teach them how to recite. Now, when I investigated, I found that they benefit from the hidden curriculum that I did not even intend. <laughs> unintended curriculum. <laughs> what was the unintended curriculum? If he has that passion and he understood that in depth, I should start too. And the only way to start is learning how to. I did not even plan for it. But you see the idea? You see the idea? Now, in Quran, Allah Azza wa Jalla gives a style of stories, give us style of stories, give us style of parables, and give us style of do's and don'ts. Right? Each one has a need. If you memorize the Quran and study the Quran, <coughs> your life will go perfect. Because you will have a plethora of tools. Quran said this, Quran said that. Story of this, story of that. But the problem is when we take the stories of the Prophet as a book. The examples of the Qur'an as different. No. The whole point of Qur'an subjects being scattered is like you have to deal with it as a whole. Someone said, why Qur'an is not divided by subject matter, you know? Imagine the Qur'an, Surah Al-Salah, Surah Al-Siyam, Surah Al-Hajj, Surah Al-Zakah, Surah Birr Al-Walidayn. It would have been cool, some people would think, right? Actually, it's not cool. It's not cool. You know why? Because somebody will focus on this and abandon the others. Right? But it has to be everywhere. Salah mixed with behavior, mixed with transactions, the divorce and the marriage and the this and that and all together. So it gives you a dose of everything every day. Right? So when you say amthal in the Quran, is is amazing. And you know, uh, the Quran has two main themes. One theme is business and one theme is farming. Think about it, right? And they came in the Amthal a lot, in the stories a lot. Farming and? Business. That means our life, basically. It starts with farming and ends up with business transaction. And in the middle, there is eating, there is selling. I mean, there is industries and there are buildings and there are people and there are markets and lots of things, right? Now we understand the Quran is life. When I say Quran is your life and your life is Quran, <coughs> that's what exactly I mean. Okay? So when you open the Quran, be prepared to be fascinated, just like that. So when you recite the Qur'an, it's not only reciting, you are actually having a big part of life with you in your chest, in your heart. And the more you have, the more of this life you have. So you walk with confidence. That's why Ibn Taymiyyah he said, my Jannah is in my chest, right? The deen, the Qur'an, and all of that. Qur'an, for example, when uh, Qur'an uh, says, uh, to uh, to us don't come close to adultery because it is um, it is a bad fahisha right yeah. but when sin but when Allah Azza wa Jal talking about riba he said la ta'kulu riba ma'al shi la ta'karabu riba he did not say, don't come close to riba. But he said, don't come close to adultery. Why? You see, style of the Quran. That is what we are going to be discussing, inshallah. Why here la taqrabu? Why here la ta'akulu? Right? La ta'akulu mal al-yateen. 
لا تأكلوا الربا أبعافا مضاعفة قد لا تقربوا الزنا رجس من عمل الشيطان فاجتنبوه So when the act itself is not the only haram everything leading to it is also haram So that's when Allah Azza Jalla said don't come close to it But the riba is one business transaction but there is lots of business transactions halal Actually most of it is halal But this one don't eat this way but you can eat it in other ways You understand? Style of the Quran? Yes, the style of the Quran is like that Allah Azza wa Jalla subhanahu wa ta'ala He give us the example One of you أَيَوَدُّ أَحَدُكُمْ أَن تَكُونَ لَهُ جَنَّةٌ مِنْ نَخِيلٍ وَأَعْنَالٍ تَجْرِي مِنْ تَحْتِهَا الْأَنْهَارِ لَهُ فِيهَا مِنْ كُلِّ الثَّمَرَاتِ You know what I say about this? Is someone having a, a canvas? Canvas, right? And a very good artist And now I said أَيَوَدُّ أَحَدُكُمْ Would one of you like أَن تَكُونَ لَهُ do you like it, sister? You like, brother, that you have in your position Jannatun, a big garden. Draw it. Now you are drawing it in your mind, actually, in the canvas of your head. Follow me. Jannatun, imagine now. You can close your eyes if you want. Jannatun, you have a garden. Min nakhilin, palm trees, date palm trees of Medina, all around it, mashallah. Wa'anab, all types of grapes. There are rivers flowing through it. Right? Keep drawing, keep drawing. All right? And then, لَهُ فِيهَا مِنْ كُلِّ الثَّمَرَاتِ Every type of fruit that comes to your head, it is in that one. Then you become old. Then your children are weak. They are not maintaining that garden. Then one day you wake up, and the hurricane came, and comes and destroys everything. Right? That's not a good picture. It was so good in the beginning, <laughs> Sheikh. Why did you destroy it like that? Right? You know, this ayah is in the context of spending sincerely for Allah's sake. So imagine that picture every time you're giving sadaqah to someone. How is your sadaqah now from now on? If you do it sincerely, it's like that garden would be maintained. And those offsprings is your deeds. And that hurricane is like the day of judgment. Right? Coming. Would you want to see that garden when you are weak and your children are maintaining it? Means after you, your amal continuous. And then when you go move to your new home, you find that garden ready? Or you want it to be destroyed before you go? What you want? So that means spend for Allah's sake. That's one example. And the Quran will be studying in details, inshallah. I want to close here and finish by summarizing everything. One, we have to change our frame of mind when we handle the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because that's what we're talking about. I don't want to make it a big picture, but focus on the Quran, change your frame of mind. How you change your frame of mind? Memorization is a choice. It's up to you now, you make that choice or not. Nobody's going to make it for you. And present it in a very interesting way to yourself. You are a professional, nobody's running after you. Nobody's going to <coughs> judge you that you memorize or not. It's something that you are doing for yourself. Especially the sisters, right? I encourage sisters who memorize and study Tajweed, Wallahi, more than brothers. You are a madrasa. You are the one who's going to affect more than half of the society. The brothers memorize for themselves most of the time. Not Rawi. Not Rawi. <laughs> but the sisters memorize for themselves, for their spouses, for their children, for everybody around them. When a sister has the Quran in her heart, Wallahi, I know she affects more people than a brother who does. Take it from me. Right? And always, if a wife memorizes, it's easier for the husband to follow. But if the husband memorizes, it's hard for the wife to follow. Because it's all about him. He wants his coffee, he wants his tea, he wants his food. <laughs> I want to memorize, I want no disturbance, all of that. But she is the miskina, have everything, you know, to be taken care of. If she succeeds with all of that, you know, why are you not memorizing? I will, I will say, your wife memorizes better than you. Come on, man, shame on you. Like that, right? So, but, you know, take the Quran, frame of mind, memorization is something beautiful, something good. Carrying the Quran and the words of Allah in your chest, wherever you go, it is an amazing thing. It's an amazing thing to do. doesn't matter how big. Start small. Start little. And the parables of the Quran, the story of the Quran, the style of the Quran, is what will make life, our life meaningful, inshallah. I hope that I give you some glimpse into how to handle the Quran tonight, inshallah. But this is a series that we will be doing every Sunday, inshallah. 
I'm going to take five or ten minutes from the lecture for this empowering aspect, right, of the Quran, tasting it, and then we will take one example or one parable, and we will discuss it linguistically, we will see the reason of its revelation, we will analyze it, what it means, and then we will take it home, here, Houston, me, you, our family, how this can be applied with a practical action, right, to so take it, inshallah, Rabbi. I'm, I'm done. From your experience, what's your advice to start memorizing from Al-Baqarah or from the very good question. We have only five minutes, inshallah, in Aisha. Uh, memorizing, uh, I advise always, and my, from my experience, memorizing from short surahs is always faster, better, and more efficient. For someone who is not experienced with the Quran, and did not read the Quran in their childhood. So my advice, whether you are Arab or non-Arab, start with the smaller surahs. Psychologically, it is good. It's a sense of achievement. You're adding one surah after the other, you know, and also the short surahs, unlike people think that they are easy, no, they are not easy. The wordings of them, they are hard. You know, a longer ayah is easy to memorize, in my experience, my opinion, than a shorter one. And yani Surah Al-Saffat has like, you know, about 200 verses, all of them like very short, very short, very short. It becomes very hard to your mind and your mind to maintain this. So if you memorize the Safat first, actually you can memorize the Baqarah easier mm. after, right? Sure. So memorizing from uh, uh, you know shorter surahs up is, is much easier from my experience. Can you just mention the schedule again and the link again? Okay, uh, the, this is the link for our program, and inshallah, Rabbi Amin will update you through that link with the details. <coughs> and the program will come here from six to seven. That's one class, and then seven to eight is another class, then eight to nine is a third class. Now, as I understood <laughs> from Brother Arsalan, the one in the middle is the lecture, this one. And before and after, you schedule and register, if you want, for the Quran memorization follow-up. I am going to give tips for you and make a plan for you if you want, inshallah, but I mean personally, make a plan according to your schedule and hit your goal and we'll adjust your goal accordingly. If you slow down, if you move ahead, we will keep adjusting that goal. I'll, I'll teach you how to do that. And then I'll listen from you what you memorize. So one, let's say this week, you are gonna read the three ayahs that you're gonna memorize all over the week, right? I wanna listen to you first, that you are reciting them properly, then you go home and work on them, and the next time I hear from you orally without looking, and then you take the next three, and we go from there, all right? So we'll do that, inshallah. And when the number increases, then I'll have a few assistants here as well, brothers and sisters. Yeah. Yeah. Will you be here after Isha today? Yes, I'll be here after Isha today, but not for long. <coughs> and I made my time to stay until the nine o'clock. So after <coughs> Isha, I'll sit, inshallah, if some of the sisters want me to listen to your recitation and give my comment on it for today, I'll do so, inshallah. So I'll, I'll come back here after Isha for about half hour or so, inshallah. Yes? Very quickly, Shaykh. Any resources that we should refer to while learning this particular talk, topic on the Quran? Any particular books that you have in mind, websites? Yes. Uh, unfortunately, any in-depth studies of Quran of any type, it, there is a, a lack on it and the dearth on it in English. So take my lectures, again, we'll change the frame of mind. Take my lectures as an initiative of doing mm -hmm. just that. Okay. So, you know, when I give Amsal <coughs> Quran, I would be giving you references, but maybe they're in Arabic, right? Uh, but I read five, six different books, right? And I give you, but I will give you that. So I hope that from the recording, if one brother or one sister, they are very good in transcribing, please do so before it piles up and becomes big. If you can do that, transcribe or take notes, like summarize it, so it becomes like our reference at the end of the course, inshallah, after eight or 12 weeks that we have a silsila al-amthal of Quran written in English with references and with ayat and hadith, so people can benefit it in it and it can become added in the Muslim library. I think this is a pretty good idea, Ali, so please, inshallah, help with that. جزاكم الله خيرا سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك نشهد أن لا إله إلا أنت استغفرك ونتوب إليك صلاة العشاء إن شاء الله and then I'll come back for listening